Okay, so we've got 10 minutes to get through a fairly big subject. Uh, I'm going to talk about the heart tonight. And about uh, 10 or 12 years ago, Anne called out to me to uh, turn the channel and uh, have a look at a documentary on people that had had heart transplants. And I found it fascinating. They, uh, uh, they spoke about people taking on the personality uh, in part of the, uh, the donor. Uh, and uh, just just these uh, amazing things came out, which made me go searching uh, because in my Bible I'd crossed out the heart, the word the heart in several places and wrote mind because it didn't make a whole lot of sense that, uh, for example, you know, uh, Jesus asked the Pharisees, what reason ye in your hearts? Uh, well, the heart's a pump, so the heart can't reason. So I, uh, uh, and then I started thinking about all the other references to the heart that seemed to, uh, and I wondered why God spoke in Ezekiel about giving us a new heart. Um, it says uh, there in Ezekiel 36, 26, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. In Romans 5, verse 5, uh, it speaks about the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Um, Luke uh, 6, verse 45, Jesus says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. For, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So if the heart's a pump, uh, it obviously seemed to be more than that. So when I went looking, I found out that uh, I found out some facts about the heart, and um, uh, research uh, shows that our hearts are very much more than an efficient pump. In fact, uh, uh, they've demonstrated that it, it is the center of our emotions and our desires. So, the heart is is something much more than I was led to believe it was. And in fact, in the Bible, there's some almost a thousand mentions of the heart, and there's 127 mentions of the mind. Um, so this uh, organisation has gleaned and got together uh, various research from various people over 50 years, and they've shown that the heart has its own complex nervous system, uh, and it's called the heart brain or the little brain in the heart. And in that documentary that I mentioned. Uh, they showed that uh, when they put sensors on a person's heart, brain and on their heart and showed them various flashcards, they noted that the heart responded always before the brain. So there was a response with uh, what we see and what we hear, and uh, they've shown that it actually uh, is the first responder. So it seems that the heart sends far more information so it's a two-way communication street between our heart and our brain uh, but the heart sends way more information to our mind than the other way around um, and the heart signals especially affect the brain centers involved in strategic thinking reaction times and self-regulation so that's that's what they've learnt, and they've learnt that the uh, the heart heart's nervous system contains around 40,000 neurons called sensory neurites, which detect circulating hormones and neurochemicals and sense heart rate and pressure information. So all of this information is processed in our heart and through various means, through uh, rhythmic and uh, uh, electromagnetic and chemical, and there's always one that I cannot, can't think of, communicates with our with our, um, uh, with our with our mind, with our brain, uh, which is like the the, the computer, uh, you know, the, the central the, the system there, uh, but it's our heart that processes the information first. So I found that really fascinating, and it began to explain to me uh, why the Lord was interested in our heart much more than he's interested in our brain, in our mind, in our capacity, uh, our mental, uh, you know, gymnastic capacity. And uh, I found out some fascinating facts about, you know, for example, I mentioned the electromagnetic field, that uh, the activity in our heart is some 5,000 times greater 
than what's in our brain. And it can be measured feet from our body. And uh, when you actually, uh, you know, speaking with somebody and actually, uh, you know, find it really easy to converse with them, uh, it's it's said that that actually is that um, that magnetism, magnetism, which is uh, which is that being demonstrated. But it uh, envelops every cell of our body, uh, and uh, just way, as I say, way more than the the activity within our brain. So where's this all going? Well, the, um, what it shows is that the Lord knows what he's doing. He knows actually what uh, that our, it is our heart that he's interested in. It, it's the heart of man. It says that he's desperately wicked. Who can know it? It's the heart that he wants to deal with. It's the, the heart, that, the new heart that he's given to us because, uh, as I said, the heart of man is, is desperately wicked. And when you, uh, when you uh, look at uh, the things that he says uh, emanate from our heart, I'm juggling a few papers here. Uh, in Matthew 15, verse 17, he says, do you not understand? Uh, he's talking about, you know, what goes into the mouth. He says, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witnesses, uh, witness blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with the unwashed hands defiles not a man. So the heart of man has is is incapable of dealing with uh, things, the emotions that we feel. Uh, and as I say, they've realised that the heart is the uh, primary source of all emotions that we uh, experience. When Nick heard about his dad with that, uh, uh, with having that stroke, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have felt it, he wouldn't have thought, um, you know, he would have felt it in his heart, uh, as I'm, I'm pretty sure we can all relate to. We hear good news or bad news. Uh, we have sayings. Nick's heart would have sunk uh, or sank when that uh, when he heard that news, and uh, when we hear bad news, that's the feeling we get. And it is uh, just uh, uh, this capacity that the Lord is. So these are emotions that we all experience, but the Lord has given us capacity by His Spirit that we can uh, experience the right emotions or good emotions. Uh, Juggle my papers a bit more, and I can see here that. Um, so all of those things that Jesus said proceeds out of uh, the heart, the natural heart. But in Galatians five verse twenty two, it says, "But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith." And Anne pointed out to me that they're they're emotions, they're feelings. Uh, love and joy is uh, and peace or harmony. Are emotions that are felt, but so are the opposite. Uh, the opposite of those are hate, sadness, anxiety, or disharmony, things that that, are, that we actually feel. And by the Spirit, and by the Lord working in our heart and giving us a capacity to um, direct our heart, as we'll just finish up with, um, we have this uh, this wonderful experience, and. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but I think I'll just try. Yeah, okay. So the bottom here is what this uh, organisation called the Institute of Heart Math, they measure that is when our heart is in co a coherent state and it's just lovely up and down. But the, the top is what they call incoherent. And in that state, that's not good. And that's how a lot of people, and maybe we do from time to time, function in a state of anxiety. And it's likened to driving a car with one foot on the accelerator and one foot on the brake. It, and that's what it does to our body. So they've realized this naturally, uh, in co in, when our heart is in coherence, we have we're in the zone. We we have those days when whatever we do just works. Let's they suggest that uh, that is coherent. Okay, my ten minutes are up. Um, so I'm just going to have to finish off with that. 
by saying things like, when the Lord says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, uh, when our heart is in a coherent state, when we're actually walking in the Lord, when we're rejoicing in the Lord, I'm just going to show one more little graph. I think you can see it. What happens when we have a, a moment, five minutes of, of anger? It shows that our immune system initially rises a little bit, but then it drops way down here for up to or over seven hours. When we have thoughts of um, gratitude and thankfulness, our immune system goes up. Okay, so when the Lord says, uh, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones, our heart is important. Okay, so um, I just need to finish. I'm just going a little bit over time, but... Um, Okay, so we've got some knowledge here maybe uh, about, you know, maybe some people did, didn't know this or didn't, um, weren't aware of this. So what do we do with this information? In Psalm 4, verse 4, and I think it's the most important scripture in the, uh, in the Bible if we are uh, in, in talking about this, that's Psalm 4 says, Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Now, that commune doesn't mean necessarily just to have a chat with, but it means to, to consider our heart. Uh, elsewhere it says, out of, consider our heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. But this is to consider, to challenge, to direct, to command, to declare, to desire, to determine where, uh, where we should be going and to be aware of ourselves and um, I just praise the Lord. I find that extremely uh, strengthening, and we're we're not, we don't have to be drifting with, uh, you know, the emotions of life and so forth. We can actually direct our heart in the way it should go. We'll leave it there.